Okay, first of all, um, first of all, thank you for being here. So thanks for, you know, thank you to spare your lovely yeah, Saturday morning with me. Yeah, so we're going to spend about two hours together. Yeah, to do some quick revisions on your Form 5, Chapter 1. Now we're going to do a very, very quick revisions on that. Yeah, uh, so before I start, okay, just, uh, just want to do a very quick uh, introductions and also some quick sharing yeah, with you all. Um, First of all, um, I'm very happy to, to see you guys here. All right, so a uh, very well done. A big clap for your own effort. Because why? On a lovely Saturday morning, yeah, you actually can choose to sleep. Yeah, you can choose to sleep, yeah, until 12, until 11 or later, or, or you can choose to wake up later, you know, in the day. Lah. You also can choose to hang out with your friend. You can choose to go, you know, breakfast with your family. But, you, but now you choose to be here, all right? So the effort is there, the effort is there, all right? So this is one thing that I wanted to mention, okay? When a lot of people say, oh, sir, I want to study hard, I want to get a good result, this and that, this and that. But sometimes the problem is what? The commitment. The commitment is not there, right? Sometimes, sometimes some students say, okay, I promise myself I need to study two hours or three hours in a day, but they cannot do it consistently. So let's say for one day, study for 30 minutes. I cannot ready. Like. So let's play around with some um, Instagram. Let's play around with Instagram. Let's do TikTok. Let's do some dance move. Okay, so to distress myself. So at the end of the day, initially you plan to study only for two hours. Now you only study for 30 minutes and this thing continue. So sometimes the commitment is very, very important. Okay, like you see, for example, for today's sessions are, uh, uh, you'll be surprised that actually the people who attended is only uh, less than 25% of people who registered. Okay, less than 25% of people registered turn up. Okay, it means 70 to 80% people they registered but they didn't turn up. So that's why I say commitment, especially now, now, now you guys have the convenience of what recording. So many people registered. So this should be a live seminar, but many people after register got said, got recording or not, got recording or not. So one thing, no, oh, got recording. Okay, lah, never mind, lah, no need to attend. Lah. So I can go to do other things. I can go and sleep and watch the recording afterward. Yeah. So, so that's why I say, oh, guys, commitment is very, very important. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first thing. Second thing, a lot of people say, so I don't have the motivation to do this and that. Okay. So sometimes when it comes to motivations, uh, uh, it's really about a simple things. Okay, let me share. Let me share with you a simple, simple story. Uh, and I would like to, you all to interact with me, guys. What if today, today I ask you to work? Uh, I, I ask you to clean the toilet. Okay, I ask you to work every day, clean the toilet eight hours. Uh, every day, spend spend eight hours to clean toilet. Of course, not cleaning one toilet lah. Okay, I want you to wash a lot of toilets. Okay, every day you spend eight hours to wash toilet okay and this is your job lah, technically this is your job okay so and then i pay you for two thousand i pay you two thousand every month okay so tell me would you willing to do it if you're willing to clean the toilet for eight hours in a day and then get two thousand every month you type number one 
If you say, no, no way, <laughs> no way I will clean the toilet, you type number two. Okay, all right. So many of you will type number two, right? Okay, very good, very good. Say, yeah, dirty lah. Okay, 2,000, I don't have, uh, I got so many money, 2,000 is nothing for me. Okay, what if now I ask you a simple thing? Okay, another thing. Uh, what if now I ask you to clean the toilet six to eight hours in a day? Okay, you do it every single day. Okay, and I pay you 2,000. And then now the condition is that, okay, you need the 2,000 ringgit because now someone, let's say someone that you love, someone that very close to you now was sick. So, and then you need the money to really pay the medical bill. You read the money, you need the money to help the person. So how many of you willing to work for the 2,000? Type one. So guys, you all can see the chat box and you all can see the response, huh? okay? You all can see the response, okay? So, you see what happened here? What happened here? So, the same condition, right? You still wash the toilet, you still wash six to eight hours, you still being paid 2,000. I didn't increase the pay, right? But how come some of you who refuse to clean the toilet just now, now you're okay. Hey, now I can clean toilet already, or order for 2,000. Why? Huh? That's a simple thing, guys, because you, you have a reason, you have a why, a big why in your heart. Why I need to clean the toilet? So just now you feel that, yeah, it's dirty, la, only 2,000, all right? So no point for me to do it. There's no reason for you to do the, do the thing. But now you know that, okay, although 2,000 is not much, although I might be able to find a better job, Although it's so dirty, I don't like something dirty. I don't like something smelly. But I know I need the 2000 because the 2000 I need it to help someone that I love. So you see what? The whole process is the same thing. The only difference is what? The why. So a lot of students say, okay, I want to get a top, I want to be a top scorer. I want to do, I want to, I want to uh I want to get a good result, this and that, but somehow they're not motivated to do this and that. They say, I cannot la, no om la, no mood la. Okay. So a simple thing, all right, because most of the students, I say most, I mean it, more than 70% of students, they don't know why they study, why they need to study one, okay? Many will say, okay, I study because I want to make my parents happy, make someone happy, impress someone, but they never know the why in their heart, why they need to study so hard. So that's a question that I want you to think. So once you find your why, once you have a strong reason, it will really push you, it will really push you Okay, to how say um, um to work harder, like I would say. Yeah. So that's the first thing I want you to think today. The why. Why you need to do this. Okay. Because if you don't have a why, you don't have a what we call that the push. Okay, you don't have a push. Okay. You don't have the drive, you don't have the motivation. So the motivation all comes from the inner part of yourself. Do you find the why in your heart? Okay, so that's the first thing. Okay, so the second thing is that a lot of students, okay, just now I get a very good uh, a comment also, I get a private message. Huh? So uh, as usual, guys, I do, I prefer you all not send me private message, I send a message to the public space. Okay, so I get a message from a student, okay, I will do the job, I'll clean the toilet, but at the same time, I will look for a better job. That's good, that's good, you see? So sometimes you, 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 sometimes you can think out of the box one. So you still work for the job for 2000, but at the same time, maybe you can go for, you can, you can get a better job. So maybe you can get more money to help the person. No problem, okay? But the, the main story or the main learning from this story that I tell you is that why you are not motivated because you have no reason and you don't know why you need to work hard. Because some people say, oh, other people work hard, I work hard. Lah. My father, mother asked me to work hard, I work hard. Lah. So the reason is not strong enough to move you, okay? So that's the first one, okay? So uh, before we kick start with today's session, there's another one thing I'd like to share with you. Sometimes a lot of students say, sir, what is the best method that I can study, okay? Is this method the best one? Is that method the best one? For me, there is no best method in the world, okay? There is always, always the most suitable method only, okay? This method may be used by your friend who did very well in the exam, yeah? But it might, it, it might not necessarily work for you, okay? Because everyone is unique. Everyone has their own study style. Some people want to study early in the morning. Some people love to study midnight. They say, oh, I'm very productive midnight because no distraction. No people will disturb and catch me. 
it's okay one. So everyone is very special. So it's not like one shoe fit all size, you know. So you have to find your own method. So how this can be done? Trial and error. Sometimes it's really trial and error. You never know this method works for you or not. You need to try. If cannot, change. If cannot, then you change, okay? But a lot of students, they don't want that. They don't want to having the, the, the failure like, oh, I try this, it doesn't work, I fail. So they are so scared of failure. They're so scared of try something new. So they are they're always looking for somebody okay, to tell them, okay, you do this, confirm can one. You do that, confirm can one. So they're always looking for someone to point the road for them. Uh, nothing wrong, guys, but it's not, but this will this will really um, be a problem when you go to working or in your life. Let's say, guys, now, for example, you have somebody, maybe your teacher, your tuition teacher, your parents tell you what to do. You do this, you do that, you choose this, you choose that. But are they going to be with you forever? Okay, are you expecting, let's say, someone, let's say your parents, when you are 40 years old, do this, do that. No, you need to learn somewhere, right? Okay, in the future, you need to learn that, okay, you have to be responsibility to try something new and then whether it's, you know, a good or bad, you have to accept it and you have to move on. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to tell you. Just some simple sharing here. Okay, so let's start. So now we are going to start our revision for your Form 5, Chapter 1. So I always like to say the words, I need to manage your expectation. Uh, there's no way if you, are a per if you are a person who know nothing about Redox, this chapter, you are super blur. You come into this session, after two hours, you will know every single thing of this entire chapter. No, not at all. Okay, this chapter, uh, I'm not sure how your school conducted it. For me, when I teach my Zoom class, I think there's some, I think some of you are my Zoom class student. I can I can see the name. If you are if you if you are currently my Zoom class students, you should know how long we spend on this chapter. Huh? We spend four and a half months, four and a half months just to finish chapter one. If you are my current student, you know exactly what I say. This is this chapter is super, super long and very, very complicated. That's why I don't understand how some, some people, uh -huh, okay, they can finish this chapter in one month. I cannot understand. I really, really cannot understand why. Okay, No matter it's a tuition center or school teacher or whoever, I cannot understand how come a person can finish this entire chapter in one month. It's, at least it's very hard for me. Okay, Because this chapter got so many concepts. Yeah? So, but if you really pay attention, Okay, for today's lesson, you will definitely learn something. I always say that you pay attention, you will get something. At least there's something that you're not so sure. Maybe after today's lesson, you will get a better idea. And please ask questions. Anything you're not sure, you ask a question. You ask the question to the public space. Don't ask me private question. Don't send a message. Don't send a private message to me. Ask the question in the public space because when you ask the question, everyone can see the question and everyone also can learn from your question. Okay, and please don't feel that you might ask some, you, you might asking some very simple, very stupid question. Please don't think that. Huh? Any question is a good question. There's no, there's no stupid question there. Yeah, all right. Okay, so let's start. So first of all, we need to know what is redox. Huh? So redox is a combination for reduction and oxidation. So reduction and oxidation combines together. Okay, talking about midterm exam, huh? some of the school, they started with chapter one then go to other chapter. But some of the school, they started with chapter three. Some school, because they know chapter one very long, huh? so they don't want to start with chapter one. They start with chapter three first. Chapter three, then maybe they do chapter four, then only they jump back to chapter one. There are some school like that one. If your school started with chapter three, type a number three in the chat box. Type number three in the chat box. I know some of you, the school starting with chapter three one. Okay, you can see, huh? all right, you all can see in the chat box. There are some school really start with chapter three one. Okay, so, that's why for your midterm exam, it depends. If the school starting with chapter three, the midterm exam will ask maybe chapter three and chapter two, okay? But for those schools who started with chapter one, then confirm lah, your midterm exam will ask about this redox. And redox itself uh, got so many things they can ask you. There's so many things you need to, they, they, they can ask you. Uh. So let's start. So redox, we have reduction, oxidation happen at the same time. Huh? So you must have oxidation, you must have reduction happen at the same time is redox. You have four methods to know this reaction is oxidation or reduction. How you do, how to do it? Oxygen method, 
oxidation number method, hydrogen method, and electron method. So to memorize this, okay, you look at the first letter. Oxygen method is O, oxidation number is O, N, oxidation number. Hydrogen method, the first letter is H. Electron method, the first letter is E. So then you look at here, oxidation and reduction process. Look at the first letter. If the first letter is the same, put a plus. If the first letter is the same, put a plus. If the first letter is different, put a minus. The first letter is different, put a minus. Okay. Then the reduction, everything go opposite the balik. Okay. So which means when you when this process increase in oxygen, so it's oxidation. When this process uh, donates electron, then it's oxidation. When this process gain or increase in hydrogen, that is reduction. So this is the most important table in this chapter. If you not even know this table, most likely you will fail the entire chapter. Uh. Not, even, not even getting A or whatever, you will fail. Confirm uh, if you don't know this table. Yeah. So in SPM, out of these four methods, normally they will ask you oxidation number and electron method. Why? These two methods are more challenging. Oxygen and hydrogen method too easy, like kindergarten level, which they seldom ask. I cannot say they won't ask, but they seldom ask. Too easy already. They always ask you oxidation number and electron. So if you think back, the question that you have seen in past year paper, school exercises, textbook, if you think back, most of the time is oxidation number and electron method. Yeah. So the next thing you have to know, all the substance, they will always be the agent for the opposite process they undergo. If I undergo oxidation process, I will become reducing agent. If I undergo reduction process, me, myself, I will be an oxidizing agent. Huh? So please make sure you know that. Next one. Like what I say, the most important method is oxidation number method. So you need to know two things for oxidation number. Guys, how many things? Two. First thing, you need to know how to predict the oxidation number. If they give you a substance, if you look at it on the spot, you should know what is the oxidation number. So 95% of oxidation number can be predicted. Most of the time, the oxidation number can be predicted. But there is 5%, some oxidation number we don't know, cannot predict one. Then we need to do calculation. So how to calculate? So there are two things for oxidation number. How to predict oxidation number, how to calculate oxidation number. So let's spend a quick five minutes to do revision on that. Huh? So there are total four rules can help you to predict the oxidation number. Rule number one, all the element oxidation number is zero. What is element? Anything made of one species, anything got one species only, that is called element. Example, zinc is element. So oxidation number zero. Aluminium is element. Oxidation number is zero. Oxygen gas is element. Huh? Why? Although you have two oxygen, but both of them, same species. Both of them, they are O. Only one species there. So you are element. Oxidation number, zero. Okay? So let's say you have S8. Although you have eight sulfur combined together, but all of them are sulfur. Only one species. So it is element. Oxidation number, zero. Okay? Next one. When you know, when you got ion, the charge of the ion exactly same as the oxidation number. Let's say we know sodium, the charge is Na+, plus, oxidation number plus one. Aluminium, the charge is Al3+, plus, oxidation number plus three. That's it, okay? So one, re one important reminder for you all is this. Oxidation number, you always need to write the sign, no matter that it is positive or negative. Because when we learn mathematics, we always skip the positive sign, right? We don't write the positive sign in mathematics and at math. But when you come to uh, oxidation number, you always need to show the sign. Next one, all the oxygen, the oxidation number is always negative to oxygen. The oxidation number is always, always negative to when you see, for example, magnesium oxide, negative to water, negative to. Okay, so oxygen is always negative to except a few situations. The first one, O2 and O3. O2 and O3 only got O, nothing else. So who you are? Element. All the element oxidation number is zero. Yeah? Finish. Next one, when you have H2O2. H2O2 is called hydrogen peroxide. It's called hydrogen peroxide. Okay? So H2O2, the O here is not negative two. The O here is negative one. Other than that, most of the time, oxygen should be negative two. 
Last one, hydrogen, the oxidation number, always, always positive one. Okay, when you see hydrochloric acid, the hydrogen is positive one. Sulfuric acid, the hydrogen is positive one. Water, the hydrogen is positive one. So hydrogen, always, always positive one, except H2, hydrogen gas. Why? Hydrogen gas only got H, nothing else. So you are element. When you only have one species, you are element. Element, the oxidation number is zero. Next one, okay? Metal hydride. So what is metal hydride? Metal combined with hydrogen. When you see hydrogen and metal combined together, example, sodium is a metal combined with hydrogen. This is metal hydride. Magnesium is a metal combined with hydrogen. This is metal hydride. So when you have metal hydride, the, the hydrogen here is not plus one, but it is negative one. Okay. But metal hydride so far in SPM is super duper hyper rare. Very rare. Why? Eh? For the past 28 years, for the past 28 years, metal hydride only asked one time. Only asked one time. And the last time they asked is in year 2010. It's 2010, okay? So about 13 years, 12 to 13 years, they never asked already. But don't think they didn't ask for a long time, which they never asked. Huh? Who know this year SPM got surprised? You open the question, the first question, what is oxidation number in ALH3, the H? Uh, so if you don't know metal hydride, then you will thought it's, eight, it's plus one. No, it's minus one, okay? So everyone let me know in the chat box, are you okay with a quick revision of how to predict the, four, the, the, the oxidation number using the four rules? Let me know in the chat box. Are you okay? Just a very, very quick revision on that. Huh? This is the basics of everything. Because if you not even know this basic, you will struggle. Because sometimes a lot of people, they want it fast. They want it fast. Yeah. So, but if you don't know the basics, you will be a problem. Okay. Joseph is asking me, what is the use of oxidation number? Joseph, that's, that's what we want to do now. Oxidation number can help us to determine which substance undergo oxidation, which substance undergo reduction. That's why we learn oxidation number. Yeah, that's why you see. Oxidation number method is a method to help us to determine who undergo oxidation, who undergo reduction. So Joseph, did I answer your question? Okay, next one. Okay, like what I say, 95% of the oxidation number can be predicted, right? But there are some oxidation number just we cannot. So look at here, just a quick one here. Sometimes there are some oxidation number we cannot predict. So we need to calculate them. Example, carbon dioxide. Do we know the oxidation number for the, for the carbon here? The answer is no. We never know the charge of the carbon. If you look at the four rules that we learned just now, there's no carbon there. So there's no rules that tell us what is the oxidation number of carbon. So if you don't know how, if you don't know the oxidation number of a substance, you will do this. First of all, let the oxidation number that you don't know to be X. Then you add all the oxidation number in the whole compound. The whole compound, all of them got oxidation number, right? You add all of them. After you add all the oxidation number, you equal to the total charge of that particular compound. Eh? You add all the oxidation number in the substance and you equal to the charge of that particular substance. And you solve mathematics to get your X. That is the oxidation number that you don't know. Example, carbon dioxide. Do we know the oxidation number of carbon? Don't know. So let the carbon here to be X. How many carbon? One. So one X. Chemistry, no need to write one. Eh? What is the oxidation number for oxygen? Negative two. We learned just now, right? Oxygen is always, always negative two. How many oxygen we have? Two. So negative two times two. Is it okay? So now you add all the oxidation number together equal to the charge. What is the charge? Look at here. Do you see any charge on top? No, zero. Do your mathematic. X equal to four. Okay? So if I write X equal to four, guys, okay? How many marks I will get for this entire calculation? How many marks I will get for this entire calculation if the full mark is one? Well, Ashro, three marks. No way, la, Ashro. So easy calculation, get three marks. Huh? Cannot be that. The answer is zero. Huh? No marks at all. Why? Because oxidation number need to show the sign. Okay? So you won't get any marks if you don't write the sign. So please be very careful. Huh? Oxidation number need to show the sign despite it is positive or 
negative. Okay, okay, one more. Okay, let's say we have Cr2O7 2 minus. What is the oxidation number for the Cr here? Cr, we don't know. Let it be X. So how many Cr we have? 2 Cr, 2 X. Now here some students will ask, sir, why you put a 2 in front? Although the 2 initially is here. Mathematics, you see here, guys, okay? Let's say this is the formula. Tell me that I got Cr, I have 2 of it. Okay, when you want to do calculation, I'm talking about calculation. Let's say you got apples. You got two apples. Okay, how you will write when you do when you want to calculate when you want to calculate the apples, how you will write? You will write two apples, not apples two, isn't it? So when you do calculation, this quantity you have two CR. This quantity always put in front. Yeah. Add weight, oxygen. Oxygen, what is the oxidation number? Negative two. How many oxygen we have? Seven. So times seven. So after you add all of the oxidation number, they must be equal to the charge. What is the charge? Here, negative two. Do your mathematics, positive six. So by doing that, you were able to calculate any oxidation number that you don't know. Okay. So hopefully everyone get this idea. Okay. Because I think majority of you here are okay with it, but maybe a few, one or two of students maybe don't know this. Because some students are totally blur for the entire chapter from beginning to end. They don't know what happened at all. Okay? So, all right. Uh, Juni, Juni asks, what happened if there is mole in front? Don't bother. Okay, Juni, you see, for example, let's say you have, a, you have an equation. Okay? Uh, 7A plus 3Cr2O7. So, blah, blah, blah. I want to calculate the oxidation number for Cr here. Do you need to border the, two, the three in front? No need. When you have a chemical equation, all the number in front is only to balance the equation. All the number in front only used to balance the equation. So you don't need to use this number three in the calculation. So when you calculate, you only look at Cr207. You don't need to think, oh, here got three. Cr, I don't know, x, two times three, six. No. Don't bother the number in front. All the number in front only go for balancing equation. Juni, did I answer your question? Okay, can I? All right, very good, Juni. So anything not sure, you are. So everyone is clear. Okay, finish. So now, guys, you already know the oxidation number things, but trust me, even a lot of students know what is oxidation number, but when they, when they write the explanation, especially, essay, wash out my mouth, essay. When they do essay question, still got a lot of students won't be able to score full mark. Maybe they will score some mark. Full mark is four marks, maybe they get two or they get three. So they don't know why they lose the mark, where the marks disappear. Why? Why the mark disappear? That's why for today's revision, we will do two, uh, three important things together. Number one, revise some important concept. Number two, uh, I will try to tell you some of the common mistakes for students. Why students always lose the mark? Number three, answering techniques. How to answer the question in a proper way. What is the keyword? What you should do? Okay, what you can write, what you cannot. That's what we want to focus in this short two-hour sessions. Lah. Okay, look at here, everyone. Now, if you look at this, huh, let's say this is the chemical equation. Okay, don't look at the answer yet. Huh? This is a chemical equation. I want to use oxidation number method to find out who undergo oxidation, who undergo reduction. So let's follow me. First of all, on the left-hand side, hydrogen. Hydrogen only got H, nothing else. You are element. Element oxidation number is zero. Chlorine, you only have Cl, nothing else, right? You don't care. You have four chlorine, five chlorine. Don't, don't care. As long as you only have one species, only got chlorine, nothing else. It's element. Element oxidation number is zero. Hydrogen, what is the oxidation number? We know already the rule number four just now. Oxidation number of hydrogen is always plus one. What about Cl? Do we know the charge of the Cl? Yes. Cl, the charge is Cl minus. When you know the charge, the oxidation number always copy the charge. Okay? So I hope everyone know how I get all these oxidation number. Okay, now how to analyze? Huh? I tell you a common mistake made by student. Huh? Student will do this. Okay, hydrogen is zero on the left. Hydrogen is plus one on the right. So they will write this. 
oxidation number of H2 increases from zero to plus one. Or they were right, oxidation number of H2 molecule, oxidation number of H2 gas increases from zero to plus one. It is wrong. Why? When you want to write oxidation number of who, you only write like this. Okay, you only write this, huh? oxidation number of this, you must write element only. What is element? Element means I only want to see the letter, only the letter. Like for example, now from zero to plus one, this is H2 and this is H. So what we look at it, we only look at the letter, the H. So don't border the two here. Don't include the two. Just write oxidation number of H. Don't write oxidation number of H2. Don't write oxidation number of H+. plus. No, just write oxidation number of H. Only write the letter. Only write the letter. Jason is asking, if you write two, will your marks get deducted? Jason, your marks won't be deducted because you will get zero. You won't get any marks at all. Not deducted. Huh? Deducted means still got mark. But if you write two, zero. No marks at all. So this is a very important thing that you need to know. If your hand itchy, itchy, go to write two, then no mark. If your hand not itchy, you write only H, full marks. So you see or not, a very, very small difference, but the result is totally different. The outcome is totally different, okay? And when you say increase or decrease, you must tell people, increase from what number to what number? Because oxidation number, you always need to write this. Oxidation number of who? Okay, increase or decrease from what number to what number? Okay, okay, I get a chat box. I get a question in the chat box. You get zero for the whole thing or you get zero for this sentence? This sentence, uh, this sentence you get zero. The other thing, if you write correctly, still get the mark. Uh. Okay, so everyone, can you please let me know in the chat box? Are you guys under, do you guys understand this? When you write oxidation number, you must write oxidation number of who? The letter. Let me know in the chat box. Are you okay with this? How many of you never know this concept previously? You type number two. How many of you, ne you never know this previously? Quite a lot, huh? Quite a lot, yeah? So you have to be careful, huh? So that's why, why a lot of people, they say, sir, I write the answer already. How come I get the, get the mark? Why? Because your hand itchy go to write two. Lo. That's why you don't get the marks. So... At least you learn something, right? Okay, you all, you all learn something. Okay, that's what you need to know. Okay, now finish already. So oxidation number of blah, 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 increase from blah, blah to blah, blah. Okay, now next one. When oxidation number increase, what is the process? We learned just now. Look back to our notes. When oxidation number increases, it is oxidation process. So now be careful. Now you need to tell people who undergo oxidation. So when you want to tell people who undergo oxidation, now, now you can put the two already. You see, huh? zero to plus one. So oxidation number increase. Ma. So who undergo oxidation? Who change from zero to plus one? This fella. Who is this fella? H2. So here you write H2. So you always can write H2, H plus in the entire answer except the oxidation part. Uh, when you write oxidation part, you must write oxidation number of H, only H. Not H2, not H+. plus. Other than that, you can write H2 already. So you can see, this fella, H2, undergo oxidation. So H2 undergo oxidation, as what we learned just now, when you undergo oxidation, you will be the opposite agent, right? You always be the opposite agent of yourself. So if hydrogen undergo oxidation, hydrogen is reducing agent. Simple as that. Okay? So some student ask, can we, is it only, is it, is it a mask that only write in symbol? Can we write hydrogen gas or hydrogen molecule here? Yes, of course you can write the name, no problem. Not to say you must write the formula one, huh? you can write. But I not encourage you all put the word gas, lah. just write hydrogen will do. Because in special condition, hydrogen can be a liquid also. So you just write hydrogen, don't write hydrogen gas. Okay, so Xinping is saying, say, I don't know why my school don't allow me to write symbol. So that's a problem. Huh? Uh, I never want to condemn any school teacher, other tuition teacher. It's not my style. But trust me, some people, they don't know what they are doing. Some people, they don't know what they are doing. Okay, 
Maybe they are young teachers, maybe, all right? So in SPM, you can write symbol, you can write uh, what we call that. You can write symbol, you can write the name, no problem. You don't think it's like, okay, everything your school teachers say, everything your tuition teachers say, confirm correct one. No, we are human. We can make mistakes one, okay? We can make mistake one. So whatever things you, you listen from elsewhere, maybe they are wrong, okay? You can counter check with different party. Yeah? So to answer your question, Jason, you can write the name, you can write the formula, perfectly fine. No problem for SPM, okay? Next one. Okay, same thing, everyone, okay? Uh, okay, I get a question here. All right. How many marks for this kind of question? Uh? Uh, depends. Lah. Depends. If this, if this question asks in structure, maybe two to three marks. If this kind of question asks in essay, maybe four marks to six marks. Depends where they ask the question. Depends where they ask the question. Okay? If this question in objective, of course, one mark only. So I cannot answer you how many marks you will get because it really depends on where they put the question, okay? All right, so same thing, you see chlorine. So oxidation number of Cl, not Cl2, all right, decreases from zero to minus one, okay? So sorry, guys, make a, make a correction for me, please. Uh, it's a typo, I have a typo in my notes. It's my mistake, this one should be zero, this one should be minus one, my bad, yeah? So please change this for me. It's zero to minus one, not plus one to zero. You can see here, zero and minus one. Huh? So my mistake, yeah? That's why I say human make mistakes, even including me, yeah? All right. So it's okay to make mistakes. We learn from it and we move on. So when oxidation number decreases, is reduction process. So who undergo reduction? This fella, Cl2 change from zero to minus one. This fella, the two now need to be written. Cl2 undergo reduction. So when Cl2 undergo reduction, Cl2 is oxidizing agent, finish, okay? So done, all right? So Shrimping is asking, Cl2 is a gas or liquid normally? Normally, Cl2 is a gas. Cl2 normally is a gas. So we will get liquid when we dissolve the chlorine in water. That's why you will learn later on, chlorine water, chlorine water. Uh, other than that, naturally, chlorine is a gas, okay? So finish. Huh? So I hope everyone have a very quick revision on oxidation number, huh? including what can write, what cannot write. When to put the two, when you don't need to put the two. So this is very, very important. Okay, guys. Okay. Type a number three if you have, if, if, okay, Ashru, the question only asks oxidation number. No, Ashru, they can ask you anything. That's why Ashru, we have formatted here. They are total formatted here. They can ask you any method, just that now we are revising on oxidation number. Not to say they only ask oxidation number method in the exam. No. All right. So let me let, type a number three if everyone can understand a, the, this quick revision on uh, what we call that uh, oxidation number. Not very hard. Lah, huh? I didn't say it's easy. Huh? I didn't say it's easy, but not very, very hard. Okay. So that's it. So now let's go on. Okay, the next one you need to know is this electron method. Same thing, we spend five minutes to revise, then we will do something more important. Electron method is another very, very common question they ask. A lot of students, they really, really uh, stuck. They really stuck in electron method, okay? So if you want to know electron method, the most important thing is that you must know half equation. Without half equation, there is no way you can do electron method. Or I make it a simple thing, simple way like this. I make it sounds as serious as it can be. If you don't know how to write half equation, this chapter you confirm will fail. Confirm. 100%. Okay? If you don't know how to write half equation, there is no way you can even survive in this chapter. I'm not talking about scoring huh, this chapter. I'm talking about surviving. You can't even survive if you don't know half equation. So if any one of you here struggle for half equation, because I know in this crowd, there's a mixture of what? Some of you are my Zoom class student. Some of you attended my, uh, some of you are in my e-learning pre-recorded video lessons, but probably about half of you are public. As in, you might, you might never attended any of my class before. Maybe you watch one or two videos in my YouTube channel, or you never watched any of my videos before. So my concern is this group of people, okay? 
if you never learned anything from me before and you are struggle with half equation, please pay attention to what I'm going to teach you next. Yeah. So just a quick one here. So what is half equation? Half equation is the equation that got charge and also electron. If the charge got charge, if the equation got charge and electron is half equation. Example, okay, 2H plus plus 2E become H2. So this equation got charge, this equation got electron, so it is half equation. Huh? So you all must know this one first. Huh? Okay, the worst thing you can do is memorize half equation, which a lot of students are doing that. Many students love to memorize one. They memorize every single thing. Right? Okay. So you don't need to memorize half equation. Right? And it's pointless if you memorize the half equation. Why? You memorize the half equation for magnesium. Let's say in exam, they ask you aluminium. Gone. Cannot ready. Okay. So what you memorize may be not the same as what they ask. And you don't need to memorize so many things. Right? Okay. Many people struggle in chemistry. I cannot comment for other subjects. Huh? Many people struggle in chemistry because they try to memorize every single thing. And they keep telling me, sir, it's very hard to memorize this and that. So I open my eyes. I say, why you need to memorize? Why you need to memorize in the first place? No need to memorize one. Just use common sense. So I'll teach you how to use common sense to write the half equation. Huh? Step by step. Quick one. So let's say if you, give, if you are given a chemical equation, how to convert the chemical equation to the half equation. I teach a quick one, a, 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 a very quick way. Huh? So first of all, list out the charge first. What is the charge for magnesium? Many people will say Mg2 plus, wrong. Okay, magnesium, this one only come alone, one species. Anything one species is element. So I want all of you to remember, element, the charge and oxidation number are both zero. Element, anything of one species, that other charge, that other oxidation number, zero, no charge. So what is the charge for copper? Cu2 plus. What is the charge for SO4? SO4 2 minus. What is the charge for magnesium? Mg2 plus. What is the charge for SO4? SO4 2 minus. What is the charge for copper? Zero. Okay. Now, sometimes, uh, because at, in this group, there are some students who are good, you have average students and you also have some students who are extremely weak. I do get this question quite often, although it shouldn't be there, but it's okay. Some students will ask, sir, how I know the charge? How I know the charge? So this charge you should already learn in your Form 4, Chapter 3. Form 4, Chapter 3, there is a table of the charge that you should memorize. Example, okay, I, can, I can show you this. Uh, is here. Okay, let's say uh, this one. Okay, from 4 chapter 3, this is the charge table that you need to know. Okay, this is the name and this is the formula. You need to memorize this. So, very hard to memorize. So, how to memorize if you are very weak in memorizing? Take a piece of paper, copy the name of the charge. Sorry, copy the name of the ion, copy the charge of the ion. Do the same thing here. Copy the name, copy the charge. Sir, no time to copy. Brother and sister, ladies and gentlemen, five minutes. You don't have five minutes. Okay, five minutes only. Why you don't have five minutes? Okay, five minutes only. Copy one time in a day. One time, not 100 time. One time in a day. Do it for two weeks. So in two weeks time, confirm you can memorize. I, I mean it, confirm. I mean it, confirm. Huh? So far, my students who follow this method, none of them cannot memorize. None of them. Okay, Ashru, you always confuse ammonia and ammonium. Ashru, let me teach you a simple way to memorize ammonia and ammonium. Okay, ammonia, ammonium. Look at here, ammo, ammo. The front part is the same, huh? Ammonia. How many letters? N, I, A. Three letters. N, H, three. Ammonium. N, I, U, M. How many letters? N, H, four. When ammonium got one extra letter than this, extra. Extra means what? Extra. More. Put a plus. Is it okay, Ashro? Very easy. 
Okay, very, very easy only. Yeah? Ammonia and ammonium, not a problem. Okay, so you can, you, you use this kind of logic, la, okay, which will really help you a little bit la, okay, in the concept. Okay, so make sure you memorize the, the table. Ah. So like what I say, my students who really follow the method, who really be consistent, I keep on saying that consistent. If you really copy for two weeks, you really, really cannot memorize. Okay, you come to see me. Okay, you come to see me. Okay, I'll blunder you whatever thing you want to eat or whatever thing you want to drink. Okay, Conf but provided you can prove to me that you really copy every day one time, you really, really copy for two weeks. Huh? You cannot say, oh, I just want Starbucks from you. I copy one day and I cheat you. Sir, I cannot memorize. Cannot lah. You need to be honest lah. If you really follow the steps, confirm can do it. I never fail. I never fail on that. Okay, all right. And trust me, okay, I got a, so uh, I got the number of students I have is more than enough to prove that. Okay, really. So none of them feel this. Okay, uh, Freya, Freya say that. Okay, Freya, thank you so much at the table just now. The sulfate is SO42 minus, but it's a typo. I wrote SO32 minus in the table. Thank you so much, Priya. Yeah, I'm aware of that. The table I wrote wrongly should be SO4. Priya, uh, Priya, sharp eyes, very good. So thank you very much, okay? So when you can correct somebody, okay, it's good, okay? Because you know what is going on. You, you are not just a simple follower. Whatever thing Mr. Martin say is correct. Whatever thing this or that fellow say must be correct. No, you, you, you have to think, okay? We are human, we can make mistakes. And if you can point out the mistake, it's fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Freya. Thank you, yeah? So now, now, after this, how to get the half equation, everyone? You see, uh, anything don't change, you cut off. On the left, SO42 minus. On the right, SO42 minus, cut off. After you cut off, this remaining answer, this thing is called, ionic equation so this is ionic equation not the half equation yet uh, okay because we have three equation we have chemical equation we have ionic equation we have half equation so what is ionic equation ionic equation come from the word ion what is ion everyone charge this equation got charge so the if the equation got charge don't have electron then it is ionic equation if the equation got charge and got electron then it is half equation so this is ionic equation, not what we want yet. So we go one more step to convert to half equation. How? Half equation, look at it. Left-hand side, Mg will become Mg2+. plus. Try to find something related. You cannot say magnesium become copper. Cannot, no relationship at all. You don't see anything in common. So Mg become Mg2+. plus. Write it, Mg become Mg2+. plus. Next one, Cu2+, plus become Cu. Okay? So now how to write the half equation? For those who follow my Zoom class, you know how boring it is. I talk this more than 100 times, seriously, okay? For those who attend my Zoom class, you know how annoying it is. I repeat almost every single lesson for the first maybe 10 or 15 lessons, okay? So the reason is I want you all to remember how to do it, okay? Half equation more. Most importantly, how to do it? Look at the charge. Left hand side, the charge is zero. Right hand side, the charge is two plus. So the charge differences is two. So when the charge difference is two, you have two electron. You need to put two electron. Huh? So if the charge on the left hand side is plus five, on the right hand side is plus two. Five and two, the charge differences is three. You use three electron. The charge differences left and right will tell you how many electron you needed. That's it. So now I know the charge difference is two. I have two electron. So where to put the electron, everyone? Always put the electron to the more positive side. Why? Why we put the electron to the more positive side? Electron is negative charge. Negative, fall in love with, positive, isn't it? Negative, negative, repel. Negative, positive, attract. So negative, love, positive. So always put electron to the more positive side. So you put electron on the right. So no, don't memorize, huh? left or right, no need, common sense. Okay, what about this? The charge on the left is zero, on the right is plus two. Zero and plus two, the charge differences is two. We need two electron. Put the electron to the more positive side. So the positive side, let's say here, okay? Same thing like that, okay? Sorry, this one is the ballet already. This one the ballet already, yeah? This one should be Cu2 plus becomes Cu, my bad. So the charge on the left-hand side is plus two, on the right is zero. Plus two and zero, the differences is two. 
So we need two electrons. Electron put on the more positive side. Left hand side is more positive. Put the electron here. Okay. So hopefully everyone know how to write the half equation. Lah. This is quite easy for majority of people, but I know some of you maybe don't know how to get it. So my focus is the smaller group. Those of you who struggle for half equation. Okay, I hope you, you do learn something. Okay, next one. After we write the half equation, now we need to know how to analyze. Okay, okay so hold on. Uh. Juni is asking, do we need to balance the half equation by writing the more? Juni, you don't need to balance the half equation. The half equation confirm is balanced already. You see, one magnesium, one magnesium, confirm balance one. One copper, one copper. Juni, can you tell me further? What do you mean by balance the half equation? The half equation is already balanced one. You don't need to make extra effort to balance the half equation. It's already balanced already, the half equation. Yeah? Okay, guys. Now, we already know what is the half equation. The next thing, how to use the half equation to write in essay. How to write in essay. If they give us four marks, maybe, of six marks, how to do it. Four to six marks if they want to ask in essay. Okay? So, you see, everyone, open your eyes. Look at it carefully and anything you're not sure after I explain, ask me. When you want to use the electron method, when you want to use electron method, you must watch out some keyword. Electron method, they are very particular on a few things. Number one, you lose or gain electron. You lose or gain electron. And it is better if you tell them how many electrons you lose or how many electrons you gain. And it is better you tell them Okay, who lose or gain electron? And after they lose or gain electron, they become what? Uh, so, like this, you see? Magnesium atom loses two electrons to form magnesium ion. You see? Who? What happened? Lose electron. How many? Two electron. Become what? Mg2 plus. Follow this format. Okay? So, another one thing that I want you all to know is this. When you come to electron method, uh, electron method, they are very particular on the word atom and ion. When you come to electron method, they are very, very particular on the word atom or ion, which means what? If here you write magnesium lose two electron to form Mg2 plus, uh, depends on examiner. Uh, some of the examiner will give you completely wrong. It will directly mark as wrong because the word atom and ion is not there. So when you come to electron method, they are very strict. They are very particular on this, okay? Atom, ion, atom, ion. So molecule, eh? molecule, if you don't write, it's okay. Why? They are not focused so much on molecule. You write or don't write, it's okay. But atom and ion, they are super, super particular. Very strict, okay? So how you know who is atom, ion? So look at here, everyone. You see, eh? magnesium come alone. Anything alone, atom. You throw... You see, when you throw two electrons, when electron is on the right-hand side, means you donated it, you throw it away. When electron on the left, which, which means you gain, you receive it. So be careful. Huh? Electron on the right means you throw away. Okay, You can imagine this. This is you. When you throw the rubbish, the rubbish will go far away from you. So electron far away from you means you throw. So magnesium throw the electron. So if the electron is very close to you, you can go your hand and take it. So if electron very close, take your hand, take it. So electron on the right-hand side means donate. Electron on the left-hand side means receive. Huh? Left is receive, right is donate. Okay? So, but I don't like to use the word donate. I like to use the word lose or release. Why? Sometimes in the mark scheme, they don't put the word donate. Okay? But when you write the word lose and release, it's always better. So I prefer you write the word lose electron release electron compared to donate electron yeah so magnesium throw how many two electron after magnesium throw electron it become what mg2 plus mg2 plus got charge so put the word ion so same thing can you write the name here yes magnesium atom blah 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 become magnesium ion no problem one okay this is what Jason asked just now. You can write the name or you can write the formula perfectly fine. No problem. Okay. So when magnesium lose electron, what happened? So we learned the four method just now. Losing electron, what is the process? Oxidation. Magnesium atom undergo oxidation. So magnesium atom would be reducing agent. That's it. 
Same thing go to here. Cu2 plus got charge, Cu2 plus ion. Electron on the left hand side gains. How many? Two electron. After you receive electron, you become what? Cu. Copper come alone. When you are alone, you don't have friend. Who you are? Atom. Copper atom. So when you gain electron, what is the process? Reduction. Copper 2 plus undergo reduction. When you undergo reduction, you are oxidizing agent. So with that being said, we are done with the revision of electron method. Okay? So let me know. Are you guys okay with it? If okay, just type 1. Just type 1 if you're okay. So just a very quick revision on this. I would say just a very, very quick revision. Okay? So most important, you must know, electron method, very important. What you need to know about electron method, first and foremost, how to write half equation. If you cannot write half equation, nothing you can do already. Half equation is the first thing. After you have the half equation, you must know how to analyze, how to do the analysis. Electron on the right-hand side means you throw away, losing electron. Electron on the left-hand side means you take it, gain electron. That's it, okay? And when you write electron method, you must always follow this format blah 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 atom or ion gain or lose how many electron to become blah 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 atom or ion so they are very very particular on atom and ion when you come to electron method next time you go to see your mark scheme you will see that you see the marking scheme you will see oxidation number method huh? they didn't care so much on the word atom and ion they don't care so much what but electron method if you look at the answer Always have this word one, ion, atom, ion, atom. So you all have to be very, very careful. Okay? So, okay, I get a question from Darren. Okay? Darren is asking this, uh, Darren. Okay, Darren is asking, okay, uh, this one. Two hydrochloric acid plus calcium oxide become calcium chloride and water. So Darren is asking how to write ionic equation for this. Not half equation, uh, ionic. So let's learn together. Let's learn together. This is a good question. Okay, very good. Thanks for asking, uh, Darren. So first of all, let's write the ion first. Uh. Hydrogen is H plus. How many hydrogen we have? Two hydrogen. So two H plus ion. And what is the charge for Cl? Cl minus. How many chloride ion we have? Two. Okay, calcium by right is Ca2 plus, oxygen by right is O2 minus. By right, you should write Ca2 plus and O2 minus uh, by right, but you don't do it. Why? Okay, calcium oxide you learn in form 4, chapter 6. Uh, form 4, chapter 6, the chapter acid, bases, and salt. The chapter that most people hated the most. The hardest chapter in form 4. Yeah, calcium oxide is insoluble yeah you, you you can recall back okay who is soluble who is insoluble anything insoluble they are not going to ionize anything insoluble they cannot become ion so you have to be very careful with this calcium oxide is insoluble so they didn't become ion so they, they are still cao they didn't become ion so come to the right hand side calcium chloride calcium and chloride is it soluble you can check the uh, from four also calcium chloride is soluble so when you are soluble you got charge calcium ca2 plus chloride cl minus how many chloride two where to put the two remember i said just now two apples two apples where to put in front huh? don't put at the back please next one water water got charge or not no water is a neutral molecule okay some of you might say sir we learn in electrolysis, water got H plus and OH minus, isn't it? The answer is yes and no. In a normal situation, let's say a normal drinking water like this, I hope you all can see a normal drinking water like this. Okay, let me drink some water first. Okay, in a normal drinking water, do you have H plus and OH minus inside? Got very, very little only. Very, very little. You see? This is water. Let's say inside I got H2O. Okay? Inside I got H2O. Huh? Okay? 
okay very hard yeah man. you will see many h2o only very small amount of water will become h plus and oh minus so the amount of water and oh minus is very very little so that's why we don't really care so why in electrolysis we care about them because in electrolysis there are some electric they have some extra electricity the electricity can help to break the water so that you have more and more H plus, more and more OH minus. But in normal condition like this, are we doing electrolysis? No. So if we are not doing electrolysis, the H plus and OH minus very, very little. So don't write it. Okay. So now look at left and right hand side. Anything you can cut, got the Cl minus can cut. So the remaining answer, 2H plus plus CaO become Ca2 plus plus H2O. So this is the final answer, okay? This is the final answer, okay? All right, simple as that, okay? So, all right, so let me see, huh? okay. Just a moment. Okay, Darren, so did I answer your question? Darren, let me know. Yes, huh? okay. Simple as that. So you, you got the point really, Darren, just connect the dots. You're you, you quite good at the, the points. Okay? So a simple thing, anything insoluble, they, have no, they won't ionize us. There's no charge. Simple as that. All right. So I also get a question. Sir, if I don't write the number of electron here, okay, what will happen? If I don't write two electron, if I only write electron. So my question to you, why don't you write two electron? Is it very hard to write number two there? Why don't you write number two? Just write it. Lah. So what if you, so that's it. Just write. Lah. Just write the electron. Just write the electron. So because I, I won't able to tell you if you don't put the electron, what will happen? It depends on examiner. Some of the examiner, they don't care. They will still give you correct. But some of the examiner, they don't like it. They'll give you wrong. So just write the number. Lah, because from this equation, you clearly see two electrons already. Mah. Just put number two. It's not a lot of effort. That's it. Okay, finish. So I hope everyone gets some rough idea for the electrons method here. Okay, so here we are done with uh, the first part, a very quick first part of today revision. Huh? So most are the fundamental things. Although there are something very easy, but there are some small details that maybe some of you don't know. Like oxidation number, only write the letter. Don't write H2, don't write H+. Electron method are very particular on the word atom, ion. Okay losing or gaining how many electrons yeah these are some small details that maybe previously you overlook or previously you don't know about it okay so hope everyone learned something in the first part of today lesson so now let's go on to the second part applications of redox huh? so why redox is a long chapter that i spent about four months to teach okay okay the reason why i spent four months also because in my class, I discuss a, a lot of trial exam paper. Yeah, for those of you who attended my Zoom class, you know what I mean. We do a lot of questions together. Sometimes in one lesson, I didn't teach anything. The entire one hour, 45 minutes or two hours, we just do exercises. Why? Because this chapter is hard and then you must know how to apply the concept. Many people, they know the concept, but they never know how to answer the question in the right way. Okay, so the reason we spend four months is because almost every subtopics we cover the concept and we also do a lot of questions together. That's what makes it slow. But if I only go for pure teaching, confirm I don't need four months, like maybe two months can finish already. Okay, but I think this is very important. We call it active and passive learning. What is active and passive learning? Active learning means read understand maybe memorize passive learning means do exercises when you do exercises then only you know what is your problem then only you know what is your problem then only you can improve from there okay i get a question from chat box let me answer this before i move on huh? what if today the half equation is this what if the half equation is this so how to write it so who will receive electron h do you need to bother the two? No, the two here only tell you the amount. This two is, I got two H plus. So the amount not important. H plus is hydrogen ion. You can write hydrogen ion or you can write H plus ion. Plus two electron gains. Okay, gain two electrons. And then 
to form or to produce H2. So this H2, you need to write atom or not? No, you are not atom. Are you ion? No. So H2 is molecule, but I say just now molecule, not really important. You write or don't write is okay. They care more about atom and ion. Molecule, they don't care as much. So you don't write 2 H plus ion here. The 2 here, you don't put, unless you can write this, okay? You put a 2 here and then H plus ion. You tell people you have 2 H plus ion receiving 2 electron. 10, or you put a, you, you put English word, 2 H plus ion, okay? Don't go to write the 2 and H plus sticking together. No, don't do that. So it is, is it important to mention how many H plus you have? No. The important thing is to mention how many electron that you lose or gain. How many electron that you, how many, how many H plus is not really important. Do you, did, I, did I answer your question? Let me know in, your chat, in the chat box. Okay, can I finish? Okay, so this whole thing, uh, are we go, are we, can we finish the whole thing today? No, no way, no way. I'm not, I, I, I'm not and I'm unable to finish the whole thing for today. It's not, the time is definitely not enough. Huh? Imagine something we learned three to four months to, to teach and I can finish in the next one hour. Impossible, impossible, yeah? So that's why I will only talk about key points and I'll choose a few things to talk only. I'll talk about this, this, and this. This one talk a bit. This one I just talk a bit only. I'll focus more on these three things. Again, just a quick touch and go. Just go through some important concepts, okay? Because the time is not sufficient to teach you every single detail. That's why I say the main focus for today is that you get some important concept, okay? And then after these two hours, you just feel a bit better compared to the first two hours. That's good enough, okay? You don't expect after the two hours, you will understand every single thing is impossible, yeah? So I'll cover this uh, three mainly. This one is super important. It's super, super easy. Lah. Extraction of metal and rusting, I won't cover today because the time constraint. Uh, but I do this. If you look at the notes, the last picture, there is two QR codes. So these two QR codes actually will lead you to my YouTube channel. So here you have two videos, one videos on extraction of metal, one video on rusting, which you can watch and revise accordingly. If after watching, you still have anything not sure or don't understand, you can leave your comment okay, uh, below the video and I will answer accordingly. Yeah, so that's it, all right? So now we will focus on three important application here. The first application here is Fe2 plus become Fe3 plus, Fe3 plus become Fe2 plus. So first of all, I want all of you to understand. Iron love to change between two and three. So Fe2 plus love to be Fe3 plus, Fe3 plus love to be Fe2 plus. I want you to know this first. Two love to be three, three love to be two, huh? which means to say, Today, if the question gives you iron 2+, plus, which means that very likely you need to make it become Fe3+, plus. as simple as that. Today, if the question gives you Fe3+, plus, very likely you need to make the Fe3+, plus become Fe2+. Plus. That's it. 2 and 3, they love to change one another. 2 love to become 3. 3 love to become 2. So I want you all to know this. This will help you a lot when you want to write the half equation in a short while. Yeah? So now, how are we going to do it? First of all, you must know, if you want to change Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus, you need somebody to help you. You need oxidizing agent. Why? Fe2 plus, what is the oxidation number? Plus two. Fe3 plus, what is the oxidation number? Plus three. Plus two to plus three, what process is, the, is, is, is happening? Oxidation, right? Because the oxidation number increases. When oxidation number increases, this is oxidation. So you, if you want oxidation to occur, you need somebody to help you. Just like me, I cannot undergo oxidation whenever I like it. I want to undergo oxidation myself, cannot one. I need somebody to help me. So we go for oxidizing agent. What is oxidizing agent? Agent means helper. So I am a helper that oxidizing agent means what? I help other people undergo oxidation. 
So when I oxidizing you, which means that I help you to become oxidation, I help you to become oxy. Uh, sorry, I help you to undergo oxidation. So if you want Fe two plus to undergo oxidation to become Fe three plus, you need somebody to help Fe two plus, which is oxidizing agent. So SPM, there are four oxidizing agents you need to know. You need to know their name and you need to know their formula. It's a must, it's a must, okay? So these are the four oxidizing agents you must know, okay? You need to know the name, you need to know the formula. Same thing, if you cannot remember what to do, take a piece of paper, copy the name, copy the formula, copy one time in a day, copy for two weeks. And this whole thing was stuck in your mind for a very, very long period, okay? Because if you really understand something, it will really, really stuck with you for a very, very long time. Seriously. Okay? Just like me. And that's right. This is the power of understanding. This is the power of understanding. When you understand a concept, you will you, you will able to stick it for, for, for long, for long, long term. One. Because what happened for SPM students is what? They just study for exam. A lot of them, I didn't say all, oh, sorry, not try to offend any one of you. But majority of students just study for the result, for 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 for, for, for the how to say for the grades. Why I say so? A lot of students, let's say chemistry, yeah, yeah. today is SPM paper. They know everything. What wow. redox la, oxidation number, half equation, whatever shit they know. After the exam, three months, ah, forgot everything. Forgot everything. What is this, ah? It looks very familiar. Forgot everything. Seriously, because why? Okay. They only, most of them only memorize, memorize knowledge, memorize concept, memorize the answer. But they not really understand. Because when you understand something, guys, it's not, very, it's not so easy to forget one. Or. Example, if you, if let's say you are a state, not to say state player, like, if let's say you love to play basketball, okay? Let's say you didn't play basketball for 10 years. Would you forget how to play basketball, very unlikely. Maybe you say, I'm rusty. I'm not as good. Maybe now when I shoot, not as good as previously. But you won't forget how to play basketball. Same thing. I love to play soccer, football. After 20 years, never play. Maybe I'm big. Uh, maybe I'm fat. I'm slow. Okay? I'm not as strong. But I still know how to play football one. I won't forget the football one. Okay? So that's the idea. So why, why when you learn sejarah, you forget? Why when you learn chemistry after exam, you forget? Because you, did, you didn't understand it. You only memorized the answer. Guys, believe it or not, I didn't touch physics for most for 20 years now. But even now, if I go to take physics exam, I can, my results should be better than 95% of all of you here. Should be better than 95% of all of you here. Even I didn't touch physics for 20 years. And I didn't need to revise. I don't need to revise back my physics. We go in exam now, I can perform much better than you. Okay? I didn't touch physics for 20 years already. Yeah? Okay? Because understanding. Okay? Same thing. Even for today, if I do admats, I can do better than much of you. Even I don't touch admats for more than 15 years. Okay? So that's the power of understanding. When you understand something, you won't forget so easily. One. Seriously. Seriously. Yeah? So now, same thing. Okay, if you want to convert Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus, something to balance, no? 3 plus to 2 plus, oxidation number go from plus 3 to plus 2. Oxidation number decreases. So oxidation number decreases. What is happening? Reduction. How to make Fe3 plus undergo reduction? You need somebody to help you. Who it is? Reducing agent. Yeah, so reducing agent help Fe3 plus to reduce, to become Fe2 plus. So who are the reducing agent you need to know? Three things. Zinc and magnesium. This magnesium and zinc, they can give you a streak, okay? One streak, or they can give you in powder, like magnesium powder, zinc powder. It's okay, one. You don't care it's a strip or powder. You don't care. As long as it is a magnesium, as long as it is a zinc, then they are reducing agent. Then you also have some halide ion. What is halide? Halide means group 17 ion. A lot of students always having problem to differentiate halogen and halide. Yeah? Some students, they don't know what is the difference between halogen and halide. Halogen is group 17 molecule. And then no charge. 
okay, like Cl2, Br2, I2. So they are group 17 molecule. They have no charge. They are halogen. Halide is group 17 ion. They got charge. Cl minus, Br minus, I minus. Uh, so that's it. So make sure you know the differences between halogen and also halide. That's it. So all the halides, they are reducing agent. Normally, they won't give you the halide directly. Lah. They give something like this. Potassium chlor uh, bromide. Potassium iodide. Uh, so they come with something else. So this potassium didn't do anything. Lah. The focus is only here. Bromide or iodide. Okay? Simple as that. Okay? So make sure you know who is oxidizing and who is reducing agent. Lah. So after we talk so much, I think it's good to do some exercises together. So that, like what I say, passive revision. Uh, okay? We learn the concept and we must know how to apply. We do two questions together. Can I? The first question comes from Pahang. This is a Pahang uh, trial exam paper in year 2022. Which of the following substance can change iron 3 to iron 2? Iron 3 to iron 2. Come on, type the answer in the chat box. A, B, C, or D. A, B, C, or D. Very good. The answer is B. Yeah? Why? Iron 3 to iron 2 is reduction. If you want the reduction to take place, you need somebody to help you, which is reducing agent. So all the halide, they are reducing agent. Iodide, I minus. Group 17 ion, halide. Halide is reducing agent. Very good. Okay, guys, what about the next question? This is a Penang paper, 2022. What is the answer? How to make Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus, everyone? Okay, very good. I can see some answer coming up here in the chat box. The answer is B, bromine water. Why? Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus, you need oxidizing agent. So oxidizing agent got four. Uh, one of them is bromine water. Mr. Martin, if they only write bromine, they don't put the bromine water. Is it correct? Still correct. The word water they put or don't put is okay. Because some people say, sir, the answer only put bromine. Or they don't, but I learned bromine water. The water is not there. So is it wrong? Nothing wrong. The water they put or don't put is okay. One, huh? So now we have done these two questions together. Lo. Okay. Now everyone must know, when you want to solve redox question, huh? redox question as simple as one, two, three. Okay, it's as simple as one, two, three. Huh? Okay, one, two, three. Very simple. Okay, why is it one, two, three? Because only three steps. Okay, one, two, three. Step one, always write half equation. Step two, use the half equation to do redox analysis. So what is redox analysis? Blah, 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 undergo oxidation. Blah, 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 is blah, blah, is oxidizing or reducing agent. So that is called redox analysis, yeah? You tell people who undergo oxidation and reduction, who is oxidizing and reducing agent. That is redox analysis. Most of the time, we are using oxidation number method or electron method. Then some student will say, sir, when I know which method I should use, the question will clearly tell you. The question will say, by using oxidation number method, state. The, which substance is oxidized, which substance is reduced. Or they will say, by using electron transfer, state which substance is oxidized, which substance is reduced. The question will clearly tell you. What if the question never tell? You can choose any method you want. You can, you can choose oxidation number or electron method you want, if they never tell. Huh? So after you, after you write, do the redox analysis, you can use the half equation to predict the observation. You can predict what can be seen, what you can see in this uh, experiment. Yeah, No need to memorize observation. Many people try so hard to memorize observation. Uh, I can't say you are wrong, but I'm not recommend it. For me, very simple. Whatever thing I show you, no matter today or anyone who attended my class, I just tell you a method that I think maybe can help you. But whether this method suitable or to you to you or not, it depends on you. One. Some people say, that's why I say I'm not against you to memorize. Some people do very well with memorizing. They memorize the whole thing. They can score very well. They get good result. Okay, no problem. If memorizing works for you all the time, then you just stick with that method. You just follow whatever method that you feel comfortable. 
that you feel comfortable. Okay, all right. So now let me show you a simple question here. Not not in the notes, ah. Uh, okay, you can copy if you want or print screen if you don't want. Also, can just listen to what I'm going to tell you. Okay, this is iron two sulfate solution. This is a uh, bromine water. Okay, let me do this. So I want to ask you in the chat box, uh, I want all of you here, and I, I hope you all, you guys being honest with me, okay? Now, this question, if I ask you all to write two half equation now on the spot, who having problem to, mem to, to memorize, sorry, who having problem to write half equation if you need to do now? I type, type M-E, me, type me in the chat box, M-E, me. I want to see how many of you having problem if I want you to write the half equation now, immediately. Let's see, okay. We're waiting for the answer. I just drink some water. Okay. So from what I saw, what maybe about six to seven students. So maybe around 10 to 15%, about 10 to 15% of, of the audience here may be having problem to write the half equation, which is okay, no problem, yeah? So how to write the half equation? So you don't need to memorize one. You don't need to memorize one. I teach you how to use common sense to get this half equation. So my focus would be uh, six of you who tell me that you can't do it, okay? Joseph, Ziying, Meilan, Priscilla, uh, Wishwash, Adam. I hope your I answer your I hope I pronounce your name correctly. Give me three minutes, three to five minutes. I'll tell you how what to do. Yeah. So first of all, bromine. So what is the formula for bromine? Huh? The formula for bromine. Bromine is Br2. Bromine. So just use common sense. You think bromine can become what? Bromine can only can become Br minus, nothing else. You won't let bromine become chlorine, right? What it is? They're not related at all. You cannot let apple become orange. Cannot. Maybe you can make apple become apple pie. Apple become apple juice. They must be related. Nah. You cannot say, oh, I let bromine become magnesium. What is this? Apple become rambutan. Cannot. They must be related. Bromine can only become Br minus. Why? For your level, you only learn this. Bromine and Br minus, there's only two Br you learn, Br2 or Br minus, Cl, Cl2 or Cl minus, I, I2 or I minus. So if I give you Br2, of course, it will become Br minus. If I give you Br minus, it will become Br2, as simple as that. This, there's only two possibility, right? Simple as that. So Br2 must become Br minus. Now, balance the equation together. How many Br on the left-hand side, everyone? Two. How many Br on the right hand side, everyone? One. So they are not balanced. Huh? So you can put a two here to balance them. So now we're not done yet. We are trying to write half equation. Remember what I said today. What is half equation? Something that got charge, something that got electron. Do we got charge already? Yes. Do we got electron? No. So now we need to find the number of electron. So the number of electrons, no need to memorize. We can do it to get, okay, we, we can, the, the number of electrons, no need to memorize one. Huh? The number of electrons, no need to memorize, okay? So you can find the number of electrons by looking at the charge, the total charge on the left and right to find the electron. So left-hand side, what is the total charge? Nothing, ma. you don't see any charge here, isn't it? Zero. Right-hand side, what is the total charge? Negative one but here got two. So negative one times two, total charge. Huh? Remember, look at, my, look at my mouth, total charge, total. So if you only write negative one, it's wrong. I want total, I want the whole thing. Negative one times two, negative two. Zero and negative two, the charge differences is two. When the charge differences is two, you need two electron, okay? Remember, left and right hand side, the total charge, how much they different, that is the amount of electron you needed. So in this case, we need two electron. So where do you put the two electron? Electron always put on the more positive side. Huh? Electron always put on more positive side because 
electron is negative. Negative love, positive. So who is more positive? Zero is more positive than negative two. You put two electrons on the left-hand side. Now, you get the first half equation already without member rising. Next one, iron two sulfate. So iron two, Fe two plus. I said moment ago, Fe two plus love to be Fe three plus. Fe three plus love to be Fe two plus. Two love to be three, three love to be two. That simple as that. Huh? Two love to be three, three love to be two. So if I give you Fe two plus, you will become Fe three plus. That's it. Today, if I give you Fe three plus, you will make it become Fe2 plus for me. Remember my words. Two love to be three, three love to be two. So now, can we balance the equation together? Yes. One iron on the left-hand side, one iron on the right-hand side. So it's balanced already. Next one. We are writing half equation. Half equation must have electron. Electron decided by what? Charge. Left-hand side, what is the total charge? Positive two. Right-hand side, what is the total charge? Positive three. Positive 2 and positive 3, what is the difference? 1. So we need 1 electron. Where to put the 1 electron? The more positive side. Where is more positive? Right hand side. So put the electron here. So now I get these two half equation already without member rising. Okay. So now allow me to ask a simple and a quick question here. Okay. So Joseph, Zing, Mei Lan. Priscilla, Vivash, Adam, did you guys understand a little bit better now? You see that? No need to memorize one. No need to memorize. Just use common sense. I can predict all this half equation on my own. I not even need to memorize. Yeah? You follow this method. I can't say that you can do all the question, but if you really follow this, you can do at least 80% of the question. I mean, half equation, huh? okay? So simple as that. Okay, good. All right, I'm glad that you guys asked it. Okay, and uh, Aliyah sent in the answer for this uh, half equation. Very good. Fantastic. Okay, very good. Huh? Good one. Okay. Okay, uh, we shall. What diagram we need to draw? We need to know how to draw for the entire Redox chapter. Okay, what diagram we need to know? Uh, well, almost the whole thing, what? The whole thing, you need to know how to make Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus, like test tube, lah. okay? Like you add oxidizing agent into a solution to make 2 plus to 3 plus, 3 plus to 2 plus, you tube, uh, metal displacement, halide displacement, maybe no need. Electrolysis need to know how to draw. Uh, you need to know how to draw a uh, voltage cell and you need to know about rusting. Many, like, okay, almost everything in this chapter you need to know how to draw. Okay. Okay. Okay, I see some questions. Ask me about the uh, electrolysis. Uh, I won't answer your question first. Huh? I'll only talk about it later. Okay. Because now I don't want to confuse others since we are not talking about electrolysis. So I, I will answer your question afterward. Yeah. All right. So because I don't want others to confuse. Okay. So now done. Huh? So now we're done with this. Okay. Now I want to teach you another one more thing. Another one more thing is called U-tube. Okay. U-tube. Okay. A tube in a U-shape. Okay. U-tube some. Sometimes they call it as electron transfer at a distance. Okay, they call it electron transfer at a distance. So when you see the question say electron transfer at a distance is U tube. You see, uh, let me see where it got now. You see, uh, this question, this question, transfer of electron at a distance. U tube. Okay, that's it. Here. Mm, this one got or got not? This one no. Oh, this one no. Okay, all right. So that's the YouTube one. Uh, YouTube, sometimes they call it electron transfer at a distance. Okay, so what I want you all to know is this. How to do YouTube question? You all must know YouTube only got three solutions. Okay, first of all, you must know, uh, guys, what is the function of YouTube? Why we need to learn YouTube? YouTube is used to produce electricity. So in your redox, uh, there are two things can produce electricity. One, one is called YouTube. Another one called voltage cell. One is called U-tube. One is called voltage cell. 
So both of them, they are used to produce electric. They used to produce electricity. Okay. So what's the difference? YouTube, the electric you produce is very, very little only. Voltage cell, you produce much more or much greater voltage. You produce more electric. Get it? Voltage cell produce more electric. YouTube produce less electric. That's it. Okay, you need to know how to draw the diagram for YouTube because they might ask you to draw in essay. In essay, they might, they may ask you to draw. Yeah. So how to draw YouTube? Many students write this, you, which is wrong. Cannot. You cannot draw the you directly. Why? Because YouTube is made of glass. Glass cannot curve like this one. Cannot. So how you draw the YouTube? You draw two straight lines. Only draw a curve, two straight line, only a curve. So this is a proper U. Okay, so please be very careful. Huh? Okay, YouTube always have three solution. The solution at the bottom is called salt bridge. Huh? The solution at the bottom is called salt bridge. Salt bridge, they can ask you two things. Number one, what is the function of salt bridge? What is the function of salt bridge? allow ions to pass through to complete the circuit. So salt bridge only let ion to pass. You cannot let electron, cannot. Molecule, cannot. Atom, cannot. Only ion can pass the salt bridge. You see, huh? this is an ion. So only ion can pass through the salt bridge. Only ion can pass through the salt bridge. Other people cannot, okay? So ion can pass through the salt bridge. Why? You want to complete the circuit. Complete the circuit means what? Conduct electricity. Complete the circuit means conduct electricity. Mr. Martin, can I write? Allow ion to pass through to conduct electricity. Cannot. Cannot. So this is the keyword they want. Complete the circuit. Okay? Make sure everyone know it. Make sure everyone know it. Finish. So YouTube always have three solutions. At the bottom must be salt bridge. Huh? Salt bridge is used to allow ion to pass through to complete the circuit. Second thing they will ask you, what is the suitable material that you can use as salt bridge? Salt bridge, the most common material we will use is called dilute sulfuric acid. Dilute sulfuric acid, the most common one. Mr. Martin, can we use other acid? Can but not advisable. Why? Sir, can we write hydrochloric acid? Can, but not recommended. Can we write nitric acid? Can, but not advisable. Why? Because in the mark scheme, sometimes they only put sulfuric acid. They didn't put any other acid. Some of the SPM markers, some of the examiner, they follow everything in the mark scheme only. So even your answer is correct, but because it's not in the mark scheme, they will give you wrong. So better we stick with something which is safer, which is dilute sulfuric acid. Mr. Martin, if I only write di if I only write sulfuric acid, can or cannot, can, can, no problem. Okay, no, no problem. Huh? You only write sulfuric acid without the word dilute is perfectly fine. Okay, but some school teacher will ask you must write the word dilute. Then for school exam, you need to do that. Lah. But in SPM, you write dilute or you don't write dilute is perfectly Fine. Okay. So only two questions they can ask you. Huh? What is the function for salt bridge? What is the suitable material for salt bridge? Which I write here. You see? Salt bridge, the function, and what to use as a salt bridge. Next one. On top of the YouTube here, you have oxidizing agent and you have reducing agent. So we have oxidizing agent and reducing agent in the YouTube. Okay. So don't get cheated by this diagram, you don't think on the left-hand side must be oxidizing agent. You can change one. You can put oxidizing agent on the right, reducing agent on the left, it's okay. But one must be oxidizing, one must be reducing agent. You cannot put one as, okay? You cannot go to put, okay, uh, CY Lee. CY Lee asking, how you identify anode and cathode in the YouTube? Very simple, I teach you in a short while. Okay, I'll teach you how to identify anode and cathode in, a, a, in the YouTube in a short while. Okay, so now look at here. These two, make sure one is oxidizing, one is reducing. You cannot put both oxidizing agent. OA means oxidizing agent. Huh? You cannot put both 
as reducing agent cannot must be one oxidizing and one reducing agent so how you want to do a youtube question put your eyes on here so when you want to do a youtube question first and foremost follow these rules okay uh where is it where is it yeah here all right when you want to solve youtube question okay it is always good to label who is oxidizing agent and who is reducing agent label first you must know who is oxidizing and who is reducing agent then after you label directly go to write the half equation directly go to write the half equation because i said before in this chapter the most important thing is half equation you need to know how to get half equation so let me show you using one example let me show you using one example here okay let's look at here bromine water and iron 2 sulfate this is a youtube question guys am i right obviously you huh so YouTube question, what is the first thing I should do? I mentioned just now, anyone type in the chat box, let me know. What is the first thing I should do whenever I got YouTube question? Just now I say, what is the first thing I should do whenever I got a YouTube question? Anyone type in the chat box? Okay, Meilan. Okay, Emilia. Thank you so much for replying. Huh? Label. First thing is label. Label who is oxidizing and who is reducing agent. So let's look at the left-hand side, bromine water. Bromine water, who it is? If you check the table that we learned early on, scroll back to page, uh, this one, page number four. Bromine water is one of the four oxidizing agents. So you know already, bromine water supposed to be oxidizing agent. Supposed to be oxidizing agent. OA, uh, I put short form everyone, OA, uh, oxidizing agent. So what about iron 2 sulfate? Now, this is where the whole thing becomes a bit confusing. Mr. Martin, iron 2 sulfate, I don't know. It is oxidizing or reducing agent because, Mr. Martin, you see, according to page number four, this four is oxidizing agent and this three is reducing agent. Sir, the iron 2 sulfate in the question just now do not appear here. So I don't know the iron 2 sulfate is oxidizing or reducing agent. So how to know? Okay, so you all have to be flexible. That's why I say don't memorize. Okay, how to be flexible? We use common sense. Okay, how to use common sense, everyone? Iron 2 is Fe2+. I say just now, Fe2+, love to become what, everyone? Fe3+, isn't it? Very good. Thanks for replying, Adam. Okay, with Na. Okay, Rinda, Rinda. Thank you for replying. Three plus, huh? Two love to be three. Okay, Hui Ying, thank you so much. Okay. Two love to be three. So now, don't, don't need to write the half equation yet. Huh? So I teach you how to do it. Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus, what process is happening? Anyone type in the chat box? Oxidation type O, reduction type R. What process is happening? Oxidation, right? Two plus to three plus is oxidation. Why? The oxidation number go up. So when I undergo oxidation process, who am I? I said before, when I undergo oxidation process, me, myself, automatic become another opposite agent, reducing agent. You see that? Now I know already. Although iron 2 sulfate is not in the table, I, don't, I still can use common sense to figure out it is oxidizing or reducing agent. And does it make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Why? This is oxidizing agent. This is reducing agent. Makes sense. Because if both are oxidizing agent, something wrong. If both are reducing agent, something wrong. Okay? So as simple as that. Okay? Now, let's go to write the half equation. So I say just now, no need to memorize one. Half equation. Bromine. Br2. Uh, bromine. Bromine can only become what? Br2 can only become Br minus. Nothing else. Nothing else. Okay. So now can we balance the equation? Two Br on the left, one Br on the right, put a two. What is the total charge on the left? Zero. What is the total charge on the right? Negative two. Zero and negative two, the differences is two. So we need two electrons. Where to put the two electron? The more positive side, which is the left hand side. Done. So we get the half equation ready on the left. So go to the right hand side. Iron 2 sulfate. Iron 2 is Fe2 plus. Iron 2 love to become iron 3. Okay. Iron 2 love to become iron 3. 
the total charge on the left plus two, the total charge on the right plus three. Two to three. Difference is one. So we need one electron. Put the electron to the more positive side. So you see, we have successfully get the half equation. Okay, just now, okay, just now I remember that, uh, okay, hold on. Uh, okay, just now I think CY Lee, okay? CY Lee is asking me how to know who is anode, who is cathode. I teach you a simple way. When you have half equation, when you have half equation, okay, I'll teach you two ways. Uh, okay, CY Lee, I'll teach you two ways to memorize. I'll teach you two ways to memorize. Uh. First one, the first way is this, anode and cathode. Okay, anode, A is aku. Look at the last two electro, last two letters, D and E. D is donate. E is electron. Aku, donate electron. C is cannot. Last two letters, D and E, donate electron. So anode is the place that donating electron. Cathode is a place that cannot donate electron. Hey guys, cannot donate electron means what? Receive law. Okay, receive lah. So anode donate electron, cathode receive electron. Now look back to the picture just now. This fella donate or receive electron. Electron on the left. Electron on the left means what? Receive. So when you receive electron, who are you? Cathode. So this equation, electron is on the right. You throw the electron away, donate. When you donate electron, who are you? Anode. That's it. So this is no, this is how you know who is anode, who is cathode. Okay, another method that you can use is this. Because many students always mess up anode and cathode, even in electrolysis and voltage cell. Even in electrolysis and voltage cell. Let me teach you uh, a simple rule. The rule is called V-A-N, van, van. Okay, van, uh, the van. Okay, what is van? V stands for voltage cell. A stand for anode. N stand for negative terminal. Okay. So the negative terminal is okay. The negative terminal would be the anode. So this is voltage cell, but don't forget a simple thing. What voltage cell do? Voltage cell produce electricity. What YouTube do? YouTube also produce electricity. So YouTube and voltage cell, they are the same concept. So the anode is negative terminal. So now you need to know who is negative terminal here. So if I am a terminal, negative terminal, what they will do? Electron is negative, negative terminal is negative, 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 repel. So negative terminal is the one who donate electron. So if you donate electron, you are negative terminal, you are anode. So simple as that. So you can see who donate electron, this one. So when you donate electron, you are negative terminal, you are anode, simple as that. But for me, I think you use the word aku donate electron and cannot donate electron, it's easier lah, it's easier. Uh, so let me ask the question here. So CY Lee, do you get a better idea now? How to know anode and cathode for YouTube? Since you asked me on YouTube, Mark, so I answer the YouTube first. CY Lee, are you okay with this? Can I? As simple as that. Okay, now, allow me to ask a question here. Guys, do you realize that when you have a voltage cell, voltage cell here, they use a watt meter, V, like this. Okay, everyone, let me go through this. You see, huh? watt meter is here. Okay, now voltage cell. Voltage cell put a watt meter. But... If you look at the, if you look at this, uh, YouTube, YouTube only put a G, gawanometer. So now my question is, okay, can you, do you know the difference between voltage cell and galvanometer? This is more to do with physics. It's not very hard. It's a very simple concept. Do you all know? the difference between watt meter and galvanometer. Both of them will deflect one. Both of them will deflect. Shimping, one is voltage, one is electric current. No, both also measure voltage. 
So if you don't know the difference between voltage cell and galvanometer, type number one in the chat box. If you don't know what is the differences between voltage cell and galvanometer, you type number one in the chat box, then I will share with you. Okay? All right. So listen carefully. Eh? This is something related with physics and it also related to chemistry. Okay, first of all, some students say, one measure and a current, which is the ampere, and one measure voltage. No, wrong. Both also measure voltage. The only difference is this, okay? We have a concept in physics called sensitivity. Okay, what do we mean by sensitive? Okay, sensitive, all right? So, sensitive means you can measure a small change. If you can measure a small change, then you are very sensitive. Example, I have one thermometer. The thermometer only can measure one decimal place, 37.0. Okay, not bad. I got another thermometer can measure three decimal place, 27.013. So this is more sensitive. So galvanometer is more sensitive than voltmeter, which means what? Galvanometer can measure very small amount of voltage. So that's why if you look at the unit for galvanometer, it is milliwatt. So which means galvanometer can detect the lowest 0 0.001 watt. So little watt also can measure. Voltage cell, what is the unit if you all remember? Watt. So can you see, both of them, they have watt. Both of them measure voltage. The only difference is that galvanometer measure a small voltage. Voltage cell measure a big voltage. So why in YouTube, we are using galvanometer? Because I said early on today, I said moment ago, okay? Voltage cell and YouTube both can produce electricity. The difference is that YouTube produce a small amount of electricity. Voltage cell produce a lot of electricity. So if you use voltmeter uh, in the YouTube, because the voltage, the electric it produced is so little, the voltmeter is not sensitive enough to measure the electric. So voltmeter cannot measure a very, very small amount of electric produced by uh, YouTube. That's why we use galvanometer. So guys, let me know if you have a better idea now on YouTube on voltage cell and also galvanometer type number two, type number two. So you see that voltmeter and galvanometer, both of them measure voltage, but they are different according to the sensitivity. Okay, they are uh, galvanometer is more sensitive; they can detect a small amount of electric. Ah, huh? voltmeter cannot. What meter only can detect a big amount of voltage. Simple, finish. Okay, now let's come back to this. Let's solve this question. Okay, which of the following occur in diagram number four? When you have the half equation, everything would be easy now. When you have the half equation, everything would be easy. First equation say what? That's right, first answer say what? Iron is deposited at electrode Q. So let's look at Q. This is Q. So look at the half equation. Half equation is your best friend, okay? I always say half equation is the best friend in this chapter. Huh? If you have half equation, everything is easy. So they say iron deposited at electrode Q. So when they say iron means the final product should be Fe. But what is your final product? Fe3 plus. Fe3 plus and Fe, same or not, not the same. So the answer is wrong. Answer B, electron flow sulfuric acid. No, sulfuric acid is the salt bridge. Just now I say, guys, who move in the salt bridge, everyone? Who move in the salt bridge? Shin Ping, very good. Ions, huh? okay? Ions. Ions move in the salt bridge. Any other people cannot. Atom cannot. Molecule cannot. Electron cannot. Only ion can move in the salt bridge, which is the sulfuric acid. Wrong. Hydrogen gas released at electrode P. Look at the half equation. Electrode P. Do you see any hydrogen in the half equation? No, there is no hydrogen in the half equation. That's why no hydrogen at all. So wrong. Last one, brown color of bromine become colorless. Okay, I would like to do a quick revision with you guys according to color. 
because a lot of students always quite confused when it comes to color here. So you all can turn to this page. Mm, this one, yeah. Page number seven. Page number seven. Eh? Okay. So these are some important colors that you need to know. If today you are halides, which is Cl minus, Br minus, and I minus, so they are colorless. All the halide tidak berwarna, tidak berwarna, okay? Colorless, no color. Cu2 plus the color is blue. Fe2 plus the color is green. Fe3 plus the color is brown. These three you already learned in your form four, chapter six. These three color very important. They always ask one. Now, the tricky part is here. Chlorine, bromine, and iodine. This is where a lot of students confuse about the color. This one, normally people are okay. But this is where the whole thing become a bit different. Huh? So listen carefully. Chlorine, bromine, and iodine. They can appear in different form. Chlorine, if it is a gas, it will be greenish yellow color. Green and yellow mixed together. You learn this in Form 4, Chapter 4, periodic table. Okay, so chlorine, if you have a gas, it is greenish yellow. But if chlorine is a solution, so it is a pale yellow color. Bromine, always brown color. Bromine, every time. No matter it's liquid, solid, gas, always brown. No problem. Huh? So bromine is brown. Iodine, you need to be careful. Iodine, if you have a solid, it is purple black. Iodine, if you have a gas, it is purple. Iodine, if you have a solution, it is brown. Okay, it is brown. So at first, you will find it a bit confusing, but it's okay one. Always, always look at this table. Always look at the table. Like when you do the question, you don't know, refer to the table. You don't know, refer to this table. You keep doing this, sooner or later, you will be very familiar with the color. So don't give up. There's many people when they first do the question, I, uh, I cannot remember the color they gave out already. It's a process. Learning is a process. You cannot get it in the first time. Never mind. Second time. If you cannot, third, cannot, fourth. Don't feel bad. Some people first time cannot get, Ayah, how come I cannot know this color even I try so hard? I feel myself so dumb. I feel myself like idiot. I feel that I'm stupid. Don't, do, don't, don't think like that. Everyone have learning capability. Some of, some, of, some of you or your peers or your friend might be very fast, but everyone is different. Nah? Everyone born differently. Okay? You might have your own talent. Okay? Maybe you're good with music. Your friend cannot do it, cannot do music at all. So you have your own talent. One. So don't feel bad about yourself. It's okay. One. So just if you feel that I am weak, so what do you do? Do more. Lah. If you know that you are weaker than other person, give more and more effort. But a lot of people, what they do, I am weak than other person, so I don't compare with other person at all. So I give up totally. No. Yeah. Think of a solution. Yeah. All right. So, uh, shrimping, what if they never uh, mention the state, assume in room temperature? Yes. If they never tell you what is the state, then it's room temperature. Okay. So now come back to here. Come back to this question. Huh? So in this case, what is the color for bromine? So this bromine is in liquid form, right? So it is brown. What about the bromide? Bromide is group 17 ion, halide. All halide are colorless. So that's why brown changed to colorless. So simple as that. So you see, the half equation is so powerful. When you know the half equation, you can get a good observation. When you know the half equation, you can do your redox analysis. What is redox analysis again? Who undergo oxidation? Who undergo reduction? Who is oxidizing agent? Who is reducing agent? That's why remember, I keep emphasizing throughout the lesson, half equation, very, very important. If you know that you are not good with the half equation, please try to look for help. It's okay to ask for help because uh, guys, there are three types of people. There are three types of people. The first type of people is I don't know what I don't know. This is the saddest case. Lah. Like you not even know what is your own problem. You have no idea at all what is your own problem. Okay. Second type of students, I know what I don't know. 
you know exactly which part you can do, which part you cannot do. You know your own problem. Okay? So, this is a second type of student. The third type of students, I improve what I don't know. So, these students know exactly what is the weakness, what is the problem, and he or she do something to improve. Most of the students, they are the second type, okay, or the first type. They, not, they don't know what they don't know. They have no idea at all. Or, or they know their problem, but they just sit there and wait for miracle to happen. Okay? Cannot one. Like, for example, many students, they know that they are very bad with the uh, Form 4, Chapter 6, which is the acid, base, and salt. They know that chapter I cannot. But then I ask, then what you do, what, what you do about it? Nothing. So what do you expect? Today, I don't know anything about salt. Salt is damn hard for me. I do nothing. I sleep. Okay. Then after three months, all in sudden, in a very nice morning, I woke up all in sudden, understand salt already. No way. You have to do something about it. For example, I don't know salt. What should I do? Number one, ask my friend who know. Number two, join study group. Number three, ask my school teacher. Number four, ask my tuition teacher. Number five, watch Mr. Martin YouTube video or any other teacher YouTube video. Number six, attend Mr. Martin tuition. Join Mr. Martin e-learning program. Also can, but you need to find a way. You need to find a way. Ah, I didn't say you must join my class, this and that. No, you can even ask your friend, no problem, but you need to find a way out. Yeah, you need to find a way. Not sitting there and wait and keep waiting. You keep on waiting, nothing will change one. Nothing will change one. Yeah? All right? Because I see a lot of students, uh, they love complain one. Or a lot of students, they love complain one. They always victimize. Uh, victimize means that they think themselves they are the monster. They say, okay, so very unfair. Lah. KSSM got more chapters compared to KBSM. Okay? And then why we need, why? Okay, why we have more chapter and why our syllabus is harder simple things are if you complain do you think it will change no ma you keep complaining k question questions still there you complaining it's still that hard you complaining biology still got 15 chapters for example in your form 5 still the same you won't complain complain become seven chapters no so complain is not going to solve the problem for you so don't focus on the problem but instead think of the solution you you have to think how to solve the problem. Yeah, simple as that. So it's nothing to do with chemistry, but it's a mindset that you must have. Yeah, it's mindset. All right. So no problem. Okay. All right. Okay, I get a private message. Uh, uh, let me answer quickly. Yeah. Meet them are nearing. I just joined uh, the VGRO class. There are a lot of videos in chapter one. Is it okay if I just watch the tutorial? for my midterm because of time constraint. Uh, if you ask for my advice, uh, I not encourage you just watch the tutorial because tutorial is the exercise. If you don't understand the concept, you directly go to exercise, cannot. So you should watch the, what, what, you should watch the teaching lesson first. Always watch the teaching lesson, understand the concept, then only go for tutorial. Because you might heard a lot of people say, I am SPM, you keep doing question, you keep doing exercise, then can already. That is a totally wrong concept. If your concept is wrong, you keep on doing the question, also wrong one. So the most important thing is that get the concept correct first. So if you think you don't have the time to watch a video, you have two ways to do it. Number one, you speed up the, the because you can, you can change the speed of playback, ma, double the speed. So the whole, the, whole, the, the time is shorter. Lo. Second thing, don't focus too much of your midterm. Even let's say this round, your midterm you did badly. For me, although I think it's a bit irresponsible for you guys to listen to this, but it's okay. It's okay. Your main focus is SPM. Your main focus is SPM. If you did badly for midterm, but you did okay for your SPM, I think it's not a big issue. Lah. True not? Because for now, you might see, oh, my time not enough. So maybe for midterm, I cannot really push and change my grade so much. Never mind. Look at the far one. Look at the, the, the bigger goal. Your main focus is SPM. SPM is eight to nine months from now. So you still have more time to prepare for your SPM. So even you're not doing well for your upcoming midterm exam, it's okay because you are focused. Because your, what is your, the main result you want? SPM, not the midterm. 
So I hope I answered the question. Yeah, I just got one private message. So I just answered it. Yeah, all right. So make sure you know what is your focus. All right. So sometimes you just feel bad about yourself on this and that. It's okay, one guys. Don't be positive, huh, guys. I just say that you just need to be positive and know your, your goal. Okay, now let's look at one more. Okay, this is a super good KMAT question. I would like you all to try to do this question together with me. This question is a question from Johor, uh, Johor trial exam paper. So guys, try to do this question. If you know the answer, type A, B, C, or D. If you don't know how to do, don't just keep quiet and do nothing. Type X, put a cross if you don't know how to do this question. If you know how to do the question, type the answer in the chat box. Come on. Okay, I'll wait for your answer. Just try, just try. Okay, don't feel bad to try and then give a wrong answer. It's okay. Huh? So please allow yourself to make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. Right? Most importantly, understand your mistakes and improve from there. Simple as that. Okay, I get many answers. I got B, C, and D. What else? Come on. A, what? A, B, C, D. What? First time, all the answers, I have it. A, B, C, D. All the collection of answers, I got it. Wow. All right. Okay, so let's see. Uh. So let me see first. Let me see this whole thing. Uh, all right. I, I wait for a while because I want to get more and more response from, from, from you guys first. I want to get more and more response. Okay, I can see B, B seems to be the most. A also very close. Okay, wait a little time. No problem. Okay, I give you guys one minute. One minute. No worry. One minute. No rushing. I think YouTube will be the last subtopic we discussed today. Uh, all the other subtopics, maybe we don't have that much time, okay? Instead of keep rushing, you don't understand, i rather you fully understand a few important concepts today. Okay. So I can see many answers. Uh, A, B, C, D, O also got. Okay, A, B, C, D, all the answer also got. Uh. Okay. So same thing, guys. I want you all to learn the way how I think. I give you the answer, no point one. Huh? I give you the answer, no point one. Okay. So what should I do? Okay. So I want you to learn the way how I solve the question and the logic here. Okay. So I did this. First of all, this is a YouTube question. So they asked me who is solution X. Okay. I told you all just now, YouTube need three solutions, right? YouTube need three solutions. YouTube need three solution. So one of the solution is salt bridge, which is obvious. obviously this one. The bottom is always salt bridge. So now I know these two solutions, one must be oxidizing agent and one must be reducing agent. Am I right, guys? Okay. To the, these two solutions, one must be oxidizing agent, one must be reducing agent. How I know? Solution X, I don't know anything about it. Never mind. I look at here. Iron. A ferrum, okay, ferrum means iron, uh, guys, okay? Ferrum, sebenarnya adalah besi, iron, uh. ferrum is iron. So this is iron, three chloride. So guys, do we learn about iron, three chloride in the oxidizing agent and reducing agent that I show you just now in page number four, maybe? No, it's not there, right? The iron, three chloride is not in the four oxidizing agent and the three reducing agent is not there. It's not there. So what should we do? Iron tree. Okay, iron tree. So iron tree love to be iron two. Iron tree love to be iron two. So when iron tree become iron two, what is the process? So reduction. So when iron tree become iron two is reduction process. So when iron tree undergo reduction, iron tree itself, it should be an oxidizing agent so you have oxidizing agent on the right hand side so if right hand side is oxidizing agent left hand side should be reducing agent so who is reducing agent according to our answer chlorine water oxidizing agent potassium bromide there is a bromide bromide is halide halide is reducing agent so the answer is B. Acidified potassium, so acidified hydrogen peroxide. Did we learn anything about it? No. So don't bother. Acidified potassium dichromate. 
this is the oxidizing agent. I am looking for reducing agent, not oxidizing agent. So the best answer is B. So everyone, no matter your answer is correct or wrong, can you let me know in the chat box, do you understand this logic, how it works? This is a very, very good k but question. Okay, this is a very, very good k but question. Okay? So, this one typo lah. Huh? This is acidia potassium 6 lah. Huh? So, they put 7 here. It doesn't matter lah. It doesn't matter. Yeah? So, can you see? This is a good question. So, make sure you know a simple thing. YouTube must have oxidizing and reducing agent. That's it. So, you need to know the iron tree filler. Who are you? Iron tree should be a... Re uh, I don't know what agent it is. I know iron tree love to be iron 2. 3 become 2 reduction. When iron 3 undergo reduction, iron 3, it will be oxidizing agent. So I have oxidizing agent on the right hand side. My left hand side must be reducing agent. So I go to find the answer. Who is the reducing agent? As simple as that. Okay. So if you understand the logic, these questions are not going to be too hard for you. But, you, but just now we can see uh, in the chat box, uh, you can see in the chat box, uh, I will see, I will say around 50 to 60 percent of students get the right answer B, but still got 40 percent of students don't get the idea, which is okay. Yeah, as long as you learn something, that's it. So that's why, why, guys, okay, there's one last thing I want to mention, okay, before we end up with today's class, okay, before we end up with today's class, okay, by the way, you do this one first, then I do a final, final words, final closing for, for, for. For for uh for today class ah huh? okay this is the last question we will discuss then give me maybe one or two minutes to do a final closing yeah so everyone look at this question this is a YouTube question so first of all label first iron three sulfate how to know what agent it is okay how to know okay uh C Y Lee the half equation for the acidified uh, maybe I go through quickly, but the time not really enough. I see really. I try my best. Okay, so iron three sulfate, iron three. What is the agent? Iron three love to be iron two. So this is reduction. So when you undergo reduction, you are oxidizing agent. Potassium iodide, all the halide, they are reducing agent. Makes sense. One is oxidizing, one is reducing agent. Makes sense, huh? So next one. So can we complete the half equation? Yes, Fe3 plus Fe2 plus the charge plus three and plus two, put the electron to the more positive side. So I get the equation on here already. So here, potassium iodide, iodide is I minus. So I minus can only become I2, right? Nothing else, okay? So balance the equation, put a two here. Total charge on the left, negative two. Total charge on the right, zero. Negative two and zero, the differences is two. We need two electrons. Put the electron to the more positive side. Finish. So I write the half equation already. Okay. So now they ask me about the color change. Quite easy. Iron 3. So iron 3, Fe3 plus, what is the color? Brown. Become Fe2 plus. What is the color? Green. Remember the color table we see just now? Green to brown. So let's see the answer. Green to brown. Brown to green, out. Green to brown, okay. Brown to green. In out, green to brown. Okay, so the answer must be B or donkey. Next one, potassium iodide. What is the color here? Now, watch out, watch out, watch out. Iodide is what? Remember just now the table I show you, halide. Halide, what is the color? Colorless. X means tak ada warna, tak, tidak berwarna. Tidak berwarna. Colorless. Colorless. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, just a quick one. Uh, I get a question. I get a few direct messages. Huh? How to join my Zoom class? Uh, if you want to join my Zoom class, you just contact the person in charge in Vigrow. Huh? Just contact the person in charge in Vigrow if you want to join the Zoom class. Okay, that's it. All right. So now, this I minus become I2. So I2 what color? Okay, guys, type in the chat box. I2 what color? I want to see here. What color is I2? You think? I2. Darren, brown, brown, brown. What else? Come on. Come on, come on, come on. What color? I2 is, okay, see, Wiley, purple or brown? No, no purple. Okay, why? Because in this case, the iodine that you produce, where is it? In this liquid. Liquid form of iodine, what color? Brown. Remember, 
Iodine is purple color when it's gas. Do you get a gas here? No. All the iodine you produces will be in liquid form. Liquid form, it will be uh, brown. That's why I say, look, iodine, you have to be careful. Iodine in solid form, purple, black, purplish black. Lah. Iodine in solution form, brown. Iodine in gas form, purple. So you have to be super duper careful with iodine. So this iodine, they didn't tell us what form, but common sense, use your eyes to see liquid. So liquid is brown. So it should be colorless to brown. So colorless to brown. Answer it's A. So if anyone of you struggle for this kind of color previously, I hope you see how I work it out. Always, always, always write the half equation. When you have the half equation, everything is easy. That's why I say half equation is the most important thing in this entire chapter. If you know half equation, everything is easy. Okay? All right. So uh, I think I don't have the equation to cover this. This manganate thing and the dichromate thing. Okay? The time is not enough. So uh, you can ask me personally if you want later on. Okay? All right? Just tell me. Right? Just tell me that, okay, you are a student who attended this session and you want to find out this detail, okay? Okay, hold on, huh? okay. So, okay, oh, uh, I get a few questions. Let me answer these few questions. Give me five minutes, huh? let me answer these few questions, then I do a final summary, then we're done. Okay, uh, all right, uh, I get a question from, I get a question that if the salt bridge, they ask you, what can replace sulfuric acid? What if they don't want to use sulfuric acid? Is there any other thing we can replace? Okay, this is a good question. This question was being, being asked in SPM 2008. SPM 2008, they're very bad. The question sounds like this. Apart from dilute sulfuric acid, what is the suitable material that can be used at salt bridge? Okay. So you can use any soluble salt, any soluble salt. The simplest one is the salt that you are eating, which is sodium chloride. Simplest one, sodium chloride. So if they don't allow you to use sulfuric acid as a salt bridge, then you use sodium chloride. Or you can use any other soluble salt also. Can. Of course, you have the right solution, NaCl solution, sodium chloride solution. Of course, you need to put the word solution. Because if you don't put, people might assume it is a, a solid. Yeah. All right, a good answer, Agilent. Very good. Okay, uh, Adam, Adam Chua, the Fe3 plus not brown color. Fe3 plus, it is brown color. Yeah, Fe3 plus is brown, become Fe2 plus. Brown become green. That's why brown to green. What's going wrong here, uh, Adam? Can I? Can I? All right, next one. Okay, uh, all right. If you don't know how to answer my past year questions, okay, even your teacher explained also not understand, how should you ask me? Uh, I think you join my, are you, are you my e-learning program students? If you are my e-learning program students, you should, you can ask me directly in the, in the chat box. There's a chat box there. You just snap a photo on any question you don't understand and then you can ask me directly, yeah? Okay, so guys, if you have any question that you want to ask me, please, please, please introduce yourself first. Huh? Because I always get a question, don't know from where one. All in sudden, a message, a new message that never, ne, ne, a person who never sent me a message before directly sent a message, how to do this? For me personally, I feel quite rude. Lah. I'm not your brother. I'm not your friend. So I think I need some courtesy as in, at least you introduce yourself. At least you say, teacher, sir. May I know how to solve this question? How to solve this? How to solve this directly? Or you introduce yourself, sir, I am your student from where, where, where? Okay, I attended your class, where, where, where? At least you introduce yourself because I feel very rude if directly send a message, how to do this? And another one thing I encounter is this, if someone send a message in and then if I didn't reply the message directly, uh, let's say this fellow send a message 10 a.m. Around 1 p.m., uh, this person will put three question mark already. I feel super rude. I don't like it. I feel super rude. Why? I am not here to answer your question only. Yeah, I have a lot of questions to answer from other students. So wait, please wait. Okay. So, and then you put a question mark for what? Okay. 
you expect I'm sitting there and then your message come in, I can answer directly. No. So guys, I'm not trying to scold any one of you, but I just want you all to know a proper manner. What is a proper manner? Not only for me, including your school teacher, including your tuition teacher, also, also the same thing. Okay. They, are, they didn't owe you anything. One. So if you really want to ask a question, ask nicely. Okay. Last thing for today. Okay. So guys, in, in your form four, maybe your learning method focus so much on reading. You read, you read, you read a lot. But when you come to form five, you need to change it. I always say this, huh? if you use current study method, but it, did, but it didn't bring you the result that you wanted, it means that this method can be improved or this method doesn't work. Okay? You know that this method cannot already, you still keep on using this method. You, there's no change one. You need to change the method. And which method is the best? I say just now, no best method is trial and error. Like even my straight A plus student just now, Crystal, whatever she said may be applicable for you, maybe not. You need to trial and error, okay? So when you come to Form 5, one thing for sure, don't only focus on reading. You need to do some good quality questions such as trial exam paper, SPM partial paper. You need to do that. Because remember, I say three types of student. First type of student, I don't know what I don't know. So this kind of student, they don't know what is even their problem. So how are you going to know your problem? Do this good quality question. When you do the question, you know, oh, sort, I cannot do one. Most, I always can do. Okay, period table, I can do. So when you do the question, then only you know what is your problem and weakness. Then after that, go and asking for help. Okay, if you're stuck in a sort, Go to ask somebody who knows what. Ask your friend, ask your teacher, whatever thing. Find a solution. So I think that's it. That's everything that I want to share with you today. Hopefully, all of you learned something in the past two hours. Okay? So hope to see you guys soon again. All right? Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.